The royal family is steeped in tradition, and throughout history, the royal tables have showcased culinary excellence. In celebration of royal food... We know it's the Queen's recipe because we've got it in our own hand. ..from the present and the past... That is proper regal. ..we recreate old family favourites. Now, the Queen Mother had this really wicked trick with these. What a yep. mess. We sample royal eating al fresco. Oh, wow. That yeah. is what you want. And revisit the most extravagant times. Pheasant, stag, turkey, salmon, oysters and turbot dressed in a lobster champagne sauce. Unbelievable! This is Royal Recipes. Hello, I'm Michael Burke and welcome to Royal Recipes. This is Audley End, one of Britain's finest stately homes, built in the style of a royal palace and once owned by a king. In the splendour of the gardens, halls and kitchen of this grandest of country houses, we'll be recreating the food served at the highest royal tables. And it all starts here with this gem, a royal kitchen maid's cookbook, the only surviving recipe book of its kind in the royal archive. This is an exact copy of the original, which is kept at Windsor Castle. Inside, the recipes of Mildred Nichols, who worked at Buckingham Palace in the early 1900s. And for the first time in over a hundred years, we'll be bringing these recipes back to life. This time, we cook food served up by the royal family outdoors at their picnics and garden parties. Since she came to the throne over 60 years ago, the Queen has welcomed two million people to the gardens of Buckingham Palace. And more recently, Her Majesty threw a huge picnic in the Mall to mark her 90th birthday. Nowadays, the grandest of picnics are held by the Queen in the gardens of Buckingham Palace, where she hosts three garden parties every year. Grant Harold here has been butler to Prince Charles, Prince William, Prince Harry, has not only worked at garden parties, but been a guest of them. How have they changed over the years? Obviously, originally, there were more uh, the, the kind of Queen Victoria's garden parties. That you had diplomats, you had earls, you had dukes, where today you get people from all walks of life, people that have given something or done something for the country. You've got military, you've got charity organisations. So it's, it's kind of changed to how it was, I say, over 100 years ago. So uh, they're a lot less formal now as well? There's the, I wouldn't say that you still have to obviously wear the correct attire. The dress codes are still quite strict. You know, gentlemen wear a morning dress, uh, lounge suits, or maybe military um, ties. uniform. Ties are still required. Ladies can now, these days, they don't need to wear like a formal day dress. They can wear, they can wear a trouser suit. So it's formal, but it's, it has relaxed a little bit. But the protocol's still there. The timings uh, are very much still uh, in place that were many years ago. And I have an example here of, of a couple of invitations. This is an invitation that I had recently. Oh, this uh, is yours? That's my invitation. And then here we've got one from the 1960s, I think it was 1964. What goes on then? What goes well, on? Well, you, so you, you arrive uh, at 3 o'clock, uh, the Royal Family arrive about 4, uh, and the Queen arrives in the West Terrace to play the National Anthem, so you know that she's about to walk down. You'll suddenly see these lines form, these two kind of lines, uh, of where she's going to walk from the West Terrace down to the Royal Tea Tent, and you can actually stand there, and if you're lucky, you might actually get to, to meet her, but hopefully without holding a tea and a sandwich. The idea is to have that quickly. <laughs> and the food is the food. tea, sandwiches, cakes. Tea, just that, that. That's kind of how... It, it, it's, you can have... You, some people have the, they might have the cakes first and then the sandwiches, but I'm, I'm kind of always saying people don't have the sandwiches first and then have the <laughs> cakes. But do that before you meet the Queen, because otherwise you might not actually get to meet the Queen. You might miss out on that opportunity. And are all these garden parties exactly the same? The, uh, I mean, the thing is, the, the kind of basis, is, the way it's set up is the same. You've got the large tea tent, you've got the diplomatic tent, you've got the royal tea tent, you've got two military bands, you've got the gentleman ush ushers. All these kind of traditions have, have been around for But her 90th years. birthday party was a big thing. 90th birthday party was very, uh, very different, obviously, because you had a, 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 the prince did a private party for her, and then you had the, the party on the Mall, the, the picnic on the Mall, which uh, was a fantastic event, and many thousands joined her and had a picnic. Logistically speaking, this must be pretty big affairs. Mm, they are. I mean, you're talking about 27,000 cups of tea, 20,000 <laughs> sandwiches, 20,000 cakes. So there's, there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit actually done for these events, and a lot of planning. The planning is six months in advance, so they are quite quite big events. 
Does the Queen have tea herself or does she just mingle with her guests? When she's obviously met some of the guests for about 30 minutes, she has tea in the Royal Tea Tent and that's obviously looked after by her own staff. But the actual garden party itself, it's, it's these days it's catering. Since George V, we've had catering come in to do those kind of things. In the days of Queen Victoria, it was actually done by her chefs, but again, it was very different. As we said, there would be the diplomats, the earls, the dukes, and it was a much more, again, much more lavish affair. Now it's the outside caterers. Now it's the outside caterers.